Hi, this is Kylie Koo. Welcome to my studio. So, I can't believe we're into June already, but a new month means a new prompt in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group. And our prompt for June is watercolours. And this was something that members had asked when we did a little survey back in December. Now, if you don't have watercolours or you don't like to use watercolours, don't worry because there's plenty other options that can give you a watercolour type effect. So, as well as using kind of standard traditional watercolours, you could use gouache, you could use watercolour pens, you could use inks, Neocolour 2s if you've got them, even watercolour pencils, or you could even just water down some acrylics to get that kind of watercolour effect. So, as always, I would say use what you have and make it fit the prompt. And our week one challenge is silhouette art. And there's lots of scope here to do different things as well, and I'll say a bit more about that as I go through my video today. So I've cut myself a piece of watercolour paper. This is Dela Rowney Aquafine Smooth Paper and it's 300 GSM which is £140 and the piece I've cut measures 6 inches by 4 inches. Now, people ask me how to get round the issue of watercolour paper buckling when there's a lot of water on it. So what I'm going to do is to stick it down to this, it's just the backing of an old uh, paper pad and I'm going to stick that down and I'm just going to use some washi tape. You'll see there's some that I've used previously, I think that's acrylic paint on it and I'm just going to pull it off the other side there. I also happen to use that uh, backing pad as a palette sometimes. So I'm just going to pull these off and then I'm going to stick my piece of paper down to the other side. Now the other thing you can do is you can soak your paper, actually put it into something like a basin of water and that allows all the little fibres to expand and that's supposed to mean that once they've expanded it won't then warp as much. It is the sort of thing you need to do a little bit in advance uh, just to make sure that it's then dry for you then to go on and use it. So I've put little marks on my paper here just at half a centimetre in. So though it's four inches by six inches, I just want to create a little white border around it. My paper will still buckle a little bit, but not as much as it would if it wasn't kind of taped down. And this also, as I say, it just gives a nice little frame around it. And this tape I can use over and over again. Now, if you don't have masking tape, you can use washi tape. This particular masking tape is quite sticky, so I do need to be careful with it. Uh, and I will give you some hints and tips towards the end of the video on how to safely remove it. Now I will put most of the rest of this video on at double speed. So I like to use two uh, containers of water when I'm doing watercolours, one to rinse the brush out in and the other with fresh water. Now for watercolours you can use acrylic brushes but don't use acrylics with watercolour brushes. Uh, it really does mess them up. So I'm just using these Windsor & Newton Cotman paints and I'm going to use, to begin with, about four colours. A kind of red, an orange, a yellow and I'll introduce a bit of a dark blue. And I'm just putting a wash of water on there to begin with because I'm going to do a kind of wet on wet background to begin with. Now I will put a list of all the supplies that I'm using down below apart from the brushes but certainly the main things like the paints and the paper. So I start with my yellow and a lot of this is going to get painted over in another way but I just want to get this down as a background. So my yellow, my kind of orange then I'll add in the red and I'm just kind of letting these blend together. And what I'm going to do is to create a sunset and what I'm doing here is I'm taking a local scene where there's a little loch and it's very small, there's fish in it and a lot of 
wildlife, birds etc go there and it's just a nice little scene so I thought I would try and recreate that. Now I do change it a little bit just to fit my image so it's not a natural representation of it. But if you're uh, taking on the challenge this week, don't feel that you have to do a watercolour in this way. You know, you could just create a background that looks watercolour-like and then if you want, you could create your silhouettes using stamps, for example. And I will attach a couple of videos where I've either created kind of watercolour backgrounds before or where I've used stamps to create that silhouette effect. Now I dried that and you'll see that it dries much lighter at this point, although it is actually looking quite nice and quite sky-like there just now. But I'm going to gonna, uh, make those colours more intense at this point. So just adding those same colours in. Now, as well as making the colours more intense, what this does is just to give the sense of depth to the scene. So it all looks as if it's kind of skylight just now, but once I've got the basic colours down, I'll do a little bit of sketching just to show roughly where I'm going to put things in and uh, it will start to take shape from there. And I could sometimes sit and just blend colour like this, do these kind of wash backgrounds for ages. It's really just quite a nice thing to do. And even just leave these cards and come back to them at some point in future. However, I've dried that off again and now I'm taking my pencil and I'm just going to sketch in my little scene. And what I'm going to do here is to have this body of water. But of course the sky is so bright that it's actually the colours are reflected on the water. Now within this little loch there is a, a mound and you know a lot of the birds will go up on that. In the distance there's some lovely rolling hills so I'm going to put them in as well. I'm just kind of showing there the little banking that goes round it because there's a banking that goes down and into the loch. So now that I've got that done, I'm just going to use some black and I'm going to start to paint my scene in. So I'll start with the hills in the background. And what I'm going to do here is the hills that are in the very foreground, I'm going to make them really quite dark. Again, the black will start to dry lighter, but you'll see that as I build the colour up, I will leave the ones in the background just looking that bit lighter. Now in a moment I'll show you that if you want to do a straight line here, so for example if you were doing C or anything and you wanted a straight line, you can just use a ruler and draw your line in that way. So looking at the scene in front of the hills, I'm going to have this, this field and it is going to look golden with the light on it. So, you know, it could be corn or something like that that's growing in the field. And I've seen times where when you get the sun in a particular way, it's as if the field just glows. Now, as I'm painting this today, I did have to pull the blinds in my studio because it's very sunny so the colours aren't quite as intense looking as they actually are on the paper but I will insert an image at the very end and it'll let you see it more accurately how it looks at the end. So there I'm also painting in that little hilly mound that's right in the middle of the, the little loch. And again, I'll just speed this up because I'm just really putting in that first layer of black.
So I've got my basic scene in and now I'm just taking my brush and just doing some very swift strokes from, from bottom to top. And this is just to create the impression of all the kind of tall grasses etc that's growing around the bank of this loch. Not trying to make them look accurate, in fact not trying to make any of the scene look accurate, uh, but just trying to create that silhouette. So if I was sitting back here looking over this little loch then this is what I'd be seeing when there's a you know, beautiful sunset and everything's going into silhouette. So just using the black again to colour in really the kind of grassy area at the top here. And much later on I will introduce a little bit of a, a very dark green. Going on to the little island bit, the little mound in the middle here and again just putting some little marks on just to show that there's grasses and whatnot growing in there. Putting in some darker bits just to represent some of the stones that's around the bottom. And of course this little bit is a great bit for the the ducks to wander up onto. Uh, I've seen heron here, lots of different birds and swans and it's just a lovely little scene. One of my favourite places that's really just, well, not very far away at all. Half a mile if even that. So going in again, just thickening that out, making the bottom a little bit thicker to show the kind of clumps that these kind of weeds and grasses grow from. So now I'm taking out my Faber-Castell watercolour pencils. When I work with watercolour I often like to use watercolour pencils as well. So I'm just going to take three colours similar to those that I've used, or four I should say, the blue, a red, an orange and a yellow. And at the moment I'm just doing this as if I was kind of colouring in. Uh, once I get that colour down then I will take a brush and work it out again. And again reflecting some of that colour into the water. Putting just a little bit onto my field in the kind of middle ground there. And you'll see there that the hills, those in the far distance, are lighter in colour, whereas those in the foreground are darker. And that just helps give that sense of depth. So working my way around it, and then taking my brush, and I will just start to work that in. Now I will get a bit of mixing on here, just in the same way as I did with the paints themselves. But, you know, that's often the way that the sky is. It's like the colours seem to, to blend into each other. And you'd see me there taking a little bit of the red and putting over in the blue and vice versa. I just want that colour to, to go kind of right across it. Then into the water. Now of course as I'm going across this I do need to be a little bit careful because of course the the watercolour underneath will start to reactivate. And you'd see it there on the black, deliberately pulling it down there from the little mound and around the bank there, because there'll be a little bit of darkness there on the water, a little bit of shadow. And just pulling a brush with nothing but water on it, just through that. I just want to give the sense there of that not being totally flat. And giving it a really good dry at this point. 
now taking a grey watercolour pencil because I just want the actual water to be just a little bit darker and not quite so bright. And you'll see I'm putting it on this side of the little island because again there'll be a bit of shadow there and around about the edges of the water because again there'll be a bit of shadow from the banking. Now I'm taking a tiny brush and on the far edge there, just at the top of the banking, I'm just putting some more little grasses. So just using a tiny brush, just to give the sense of there being plants growing there as well. Now I'm going across to the hills and I'm just going to put some trees in here. And really I'm just doing little marks. These are not accurate looking trees in any way. I'm just trying to give the sense of there being, you know, a few trees up on these hills. Hard to see there from my hand, but there you can see it developing. So I've just done literally a few little lines and just doing little dots to give the sense of there being trees. Going back to my grasses in the foreground and just putting in a few more strands and just some little dots to give the hint that, uh, you know, not all of these are exactly the same. Some will have flower heads, seed heads or whatever on them. Now taking my brush with some water on it, just to blend in the grey pencil. And again, going a little bit over those grasses, but that's okay. I can go back with the black paint once more if I need to. Here I introduce a little bit of green. It's a kind of dark olive green. I darken it up with some black. I just want to show that there is a bit of greenery here. Even putting a little bit on the banking, you won't see it all that much because it is quite dark. But again, when you look closely at this, it's, it's more obvious. Because, you know, when you're looking at something and there's a silhouette, it's not that absolutely everything that you're looking at is totally black. And even adding a little bit of that to the little island. So I'm thinking I'm just about at the end of this, but there is something I forget to put in that I add at the end. Now, if you're not in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group and would like to join us, there is a link in the description box below. Just please answer all the questions when you send your join request. So I give this a really good dry again, and now I'm going to remove the tape. And the best way to do this is to warm this slightly and to pull it away from the painting rather than just straight up and down. Because if you just pull it from top to bottom or side to side, there is a danger that you will lift some of the paint. Doing it this way, you're pulling away from the paint so it shouldn't actually lift any. Uh, it can get quite hot when you've got the heat tool on it. So, you know, the other way you can do it is just run across your tape a few times. Again there, you can see I'm just pulling it down so it's pulling away from the painting. And there I've got really quite a nice clean edge on it. So I was sitting looking at this. I like the way the, the paints have kind of bloomed there into each other. Got a nice little effect of a sun there, one of those little happy accidents. It just... Uh, you know, wasn't planned, but it does look like a sun. You can see the little bits of green. And quite happy with the way that this has turned out. But then I realise I've forgotten to put my birds in, both in 
the loch and also in the sky. So I'm just using that very small brush again and the bird is two simple strokes. So from the middle out and the other one from the outside in. So you can do it either way but it just gives a nice little effect of birds and I'm just going to do a couple of little marks here nothing too much it's not any particular bird at all just trying to get a sense of a body, a head, a beak just really little marks just to give the sense of there being something in the water. So I do hope you have fun this month with our watercolour prompt and of course this week with our silhouette art. As I say, you're free to interpret it in whatever you, way you want. I just decided to do a little watercolour painting and I'm just finishing it off with a few rocks that are around the edge of the loch. So if you've enjoyed this, I would appreciate if you could Give me the thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, then please do subscribe if you would like to see more of my work and, uh, you know, leave a comment below. So thanks so much for watching. Do take care and I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.